Okay, so I created a brand new live stream. I have no idea why the scheduled ones were not happening. So I will I will have to check into that and figure out why they weren't being scheduled. So I'm back. I'm Nicole with Equally Creative by Nicole. Um, hopefully you are joining me on either Facebook or YouTube. I'm trying to make those those work. Let me know you're here. Say hi. Even if you're on the replay, I would love to know that you uh, caught some of tonight's live. So again, for those of you that didn't hear because technology, um, tonight I am featuring the Lighter Than Air Suite from Stampin' Up. It is in our mini catalog that will be retiring at the end of next month. So here's what that suite looks like. The entire suite is actually a pretty good bargain at $74.50, um, but you do not have to spend that in order to get tonight's kit. So these are just some of the inspir inspirational photos that um, Stampin' Up's designing team has come up with. I like to show them because it's a great jumping off point um, for getting going on your own. So. If you saw on Facebook, I posted a similar photo of this one that I recreated, and we're going to do this again tonight, but we're going to make it a little less fancy and um, a bit quicker to put together. So that was my inspiration for one of our projects tonight. And then if you stay tuned, I have a couple extra pieces of um, inspiration at the end of tonight's class. The details for the class are in the description. I was able to grab those and get them back in there. But let me just show you quickly what all comes in that suite of products. So there is the Baker's Twine three color pack. That is these right here. You have the rainbow adhesive backed dots. All of these colors are featured in the designer series paper that we will be using this evening. There is a six by six lighter than air designer series paper. We do have listed all of those colors. And let me just show you, I have did not get around to making my little inspiration boards for everything, but again, double-sided papers are some of my favorites. With all of those fun, fun colors. And I was mentioning that these look very Eastery and someone said, yeah, all spring colors look Eastery. So, you know, one of the uh, sample projects I have to share at the end is actually an Easter card but it's a fun bunny Easter egg card. So, all right, so here we have that. All of those double-sided papers ready. They come, um, I think there's 48 in the pack. Let's just double check. Yep, 48 pieces of six by six paper. And then you also have the stamp set as well as all the dies. That is in the whole kit. Um, if you just buy this bundle, that's enough to qualify to get the kit for tonight and a free pack of embellishments. So keep that in mind when you are shopping and let me know at the end what your favorite card is. So we're going to start with a nice, simple card that features some of the DSP and a little bit of stamping. So I have um, Azure Afternoon to, um, card base, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and just burnish this with my bone folder. And then I have trimmed a piece of pool party and it is literally just a sliver smaller. So it's like one eighth or one sixteenth smaller than the outside of the card. So I think it's four and an eighth by 
five and three eighths. I know eighths are kind of wonky, but it really, really works in the end when you see what happens. Um, we do have an inside layer to write on, which is four by five and a quarter. We have a piece of stripe that we're going to use, and this is three by four. And then I love this polka dot, so we're going to use this one, and this is two by four. And then I've got a layer here, two and three quarters by three and three quarters two and a half by three and a half. So we will put all of these together. And then we are using um, some of that free, beautiful uh, crinkly ribbon here. What is it called? I don't even know. Crinkle ribbon, that's what it's called. So this is pool party. And this was one of the free items in celebration during January and February. And I do have plenty of this to go around. So um, we're gonna use it tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and put together the inside. I did not decorate this. As you know, I'm trying to do better at that. However, I am not perfect. And sometimes you just want to click an easy card and you're not thinking about how pretty the inside is. You just want to write your message, sign your name at the bottom and move on. So I'm going to put this aside because we're done with that for the moment. Now we're going to build our layers. So we're using this as our first layer. This is our pool party with the, the funky four and an, and an eighth by five and three eighths. Um, and then we're going to build on top of that these fun pattern papers. Okay. So I am going to add some easy adhesive to the back. You can use your favorite adhesive. I actually used glue earlier today. Um, if you need to slide things around, you could use a little bit of glue. I do like the Stampin' Seal Plus because I can lift this up if I don't like um, where I've centered it. I am centering this on the upper end here and then I'm going to center this one on the bottom end. We're going to have a gap throughout the middle section there and that's not a problem. We are simply going to cover that up with that beautiful ribbon in the end. So again I like to go from the top and then from the bottom just to make sure I've got it as evenly distributed as possible. So that is what this layer looks like. Now I did add a little bit of Stampin' Seal Plus to the front here towards the center because that is where I'm going to put my ribbon. So I'm leaving a little bit to hang off the edge here so I can tie my knot in a moment but I'm simply pushing this down. And I am one of those people that just wraps it around the back. Um, I know that some people feel that that is a waste. However, I don't seem to have a problem running out of ribbon. I seem to have a problem with too much ribbon sometimes because I like it so much, I buy it. But I use it in both quilting fabric creations and card making. So I, you know, it's all good. So I did just do a simple little knot and then I'm going to trim this at the diagonal and get rid of any extra little fraying pieces. So that is what that looks like. And now I am going to add this layer on top of here. You can pop this up on dimensionals, which is what I did on this one. Or you can adhere it flat. If you are worried, Karin, about sending that in the mail, it actually will go through with two layers of dimensionals just fine. If you were to do more than that, I would recommend um, making one of them flat or sending in a bubble envelope, which of course increases the cost of sending a card. But if it's with a gift, go for the layers. All right, so I just put some dimensionals on the back here 
these are these little puffy sticky pieces that allow me to raise up this entire level on this card. These backs stick everywhere. Now, the trick to centering this, I like to open it up, make sure you're on the front side, and then turn it sideways, and then you can use that scored line to line this up because it's just going to be a teeny tiny hint of this azure afternoon peeking through to the back of your card. Okay. And then we're going to pull in that azure afternoon with this layer right here. That'll pull that in. But before we get there, we are going to use our pool party and lemon lolly. And we're going to go ahead and create um, a really fun hot air balloon. So I've got all of my hot air balloons uh, up on blocks. And this one I did with the smaller balloon in two different colors. So let's get that going. So we have these three here. And I think I'm going to change it around and I'm going to make this one the yellow color, our lemon lolly. And I just started up at the top. Stamp that right there. Oops. And then I'm going to take the second color, which is that pool party. You can see it gets a little, a little bubbly. It's going to soak into this paper really well. And my head is possibly going to get in the way because I do want to line this up as well as I can. All right, so let's, I just say it's never perfect. There's gonna be a little bit of white left over. Again, it's never perfect, but I think that's fine. And then I did use a little bit of pecan pie for my baskets tonight. I think that they were a great um, neutral color. So I could use it with all of them. And then because this is the smaller hot air balloon, I'm going to use the smaller basket. And I do have both the large and the small loaded up on this, but I can see through this stamp set and I can put that basket right there. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back to that pool party for our sentiment. And I did the up, up, and away, hooray, it's your birthday. And let's push this right down underneath that basket. So our sentiment is right there. Okay. Now this, goes onto this layer directly. So I'm just going to slap some glue on here. Remember to like and share this video, especially if you want to recreate any of these. We're going to put this one up on those dimensionals. I think I got them all. And then we will add this right here. Center this. And then I just push that down so everything is there. And you can just kind of move your, your ribbon where you'd like. And then we're going to add some of those azure afternoon dots. And sometimes you can get your take a pick tool to work. Sometimes you get the extra adhesive everywhere. I do like to put my group of three somehow. So 
put that one over there. All right, so that is the first card. You can see that is pretty fairly simple. You just need your stamp set to create this one. Okay. So let's move this out of the way. I have my keyboard in the way. All right. So card number two is a fun technique that I want to share with you to create some elements. You can put this as a tag or sideways. It's the same um, technique that I used for the gift packaging that we're going to do at the end. So let's go ahead and get started with card number two. All right. So Lemon Lolly has been one of my favorite colors all year. So I decided to pull some Lemon Lolly out and utilize it for this next card. So I have a four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half for my card base. I have a four by five and a quarter for the inside, three by five and a half, two pieces of petal pink that are one by five and a half. And then I have four and a quarter by three on this. We're going to use it in the horizontal direction. I have a two inch by five inch piece that we are going to create for that center embellishment uh, tag, whatever you want to call it. And then I did die cut one of the fun little flags. So let's go ahead and do our stamping first. We're going to stamp on the tag, we're gonna stamp on that little embellishment and we're gonna stamp um, on the inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out um, the pecan pie. I'm doing the sentiment on the inside is just a note to let to lift you up. And you could put this on the top or the bottom. I just have a tendency to put sentiments for like this one on the top. I really think that's one of those creative process pieces. It doesn't really matter. All right, we're still gonna use pecan pie. We're gonna put the hang in there. Make sure you put it on in the right direction. So look through that clear block. Okay, so I have hang in there. It's a great little card for someone who is experiencing loss or struggling with something. Um, I know some people out there that have new jobs who are struggling. I'm leaving that open for just a moment because we're gonna use it for our basket again. Um, but anyone who is struggling with something right now could probably use a little lifting up, right? So those are always nice sentiments to let someone know you, you care. All right, so this is the largest balloon, and it's got a spot in the middle that will be empty. I did kind of center this... but then lifted towards the top so that there's room for the basket. Just push that down. So there are other stamps that you can do in the middle here that are decorative, but since I was doing this hang in there, we're just gonna go ahead and leave that. All right, so let me get that basket stamp again. Now this is the larger balloon, so I'm gonna use the larger basket. And again, I'm just looking through, lining that up. And then before we do anything else, we get to learn this fancy trick, okay? So this punch is called the Handmade Tag Punch. It is going to be retiring at the end of next month. It is still available as of, I don't know, 6, 530 tonight when I checked on it. So 
inside, there are a couple of layers in here. So if you can see, there's like a little sliver right here. If I were just going to punch, this would slide in this way. But because I'm creating a fancy top and bottom on this panel, I'm sliding it in from the top into that little um, crack and just kind of eyeballing the left and right sides there and then making sure it is straight-ish and that the top goes all the way above that curve. And then I'm just gonna punch it. And that is one top that we get. You can see that's, that's the little garbage piece there. And then I'm gonna turn it over and do the same on the bottom. So I could really see this being a banner across with a sentiment on it. It could go vertical or horizontal but it's a great way to utilize some punches that you have in a different way. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add this on dimensionals. So I'm just gonna put two of these on here. Now that we've done the fancy punching, we can go ahead and add the rest of the raised elements on here. The flagged ends do hang over just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and add our ribbon, which is the twine and it's the lemon lolly. And I did do this towards the bottom. And I just kind of wrapped it around three times. And then I went ahead and tied a bow. The bow can go on either side. Let's see if I can get that tight enough with my big old fingers. There we go. All right, so if I had tied it on the other side, it would have a little more loopy loop, but I'm really, it's just a little extra element. It is not super essential that it uh, is on either side. So I'm going to slide it down just a little bit. Now, because I want the bow to be off to the side, I'm going to kind of curve this and just pull so that the bow comes over here. And then again, just drop that down a little bit so that my basket shows. All right, so this piece is ready for my little dots. And I stuck with a color theme. So these are um, the, the pool party dots so that it kind of sort of matches that ribbon and that paper, um, those colors. All right, my putty is not sticking very well. Let's do this for the big one. Here we go. You can put whatever colors you want on here. You can put five, you can put seven, you can put two. I'm just stuck on this three thing. Maybe one day I'll, I'll figure out why. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble everything and put these layers together. So let's start on the inside. Just scribble some of the adhesive on there. It's really thin. This uh, glue goes a long, long way. And when you think you're out, just shake it to the bottom and you're still not out. All right, so now I am gonna go ahead and use the tape runner, however. So I've got some stamp and seal. I'm gonna put some along each edge of this center DSP. And then I'm simply lining this up so that I have about a quarter of an inch or so showing on either side. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll do the same on this side. 
And then I will add some more adhesive to the back. Do not have to run this in long strips. You can do small bits, however that works for you. Again, I like to open this up. Okay. I was frozen for, my, for myself for a second there. All right, so this piece does align from the top to the bottom of our card. So that full five and a half inches is what you want there. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna add our lemon lolly across the center here. And I am going to be a little particular. I want it in the center as much as possible so that that extra label on top sits nicely. Okay, so that looks, I eyeballed it. I didn't measure and mark or any of that good stuff. And now we're going to add this piece up on dimensionals. these suckers off with the take a pick tool because my fingernails not working of course I forgot to do my little trick with the highlighter so I have to look and see if they're shiny to know if I got all of the backs off or not so if you struggle with that like I do just color on the back with some highlighter so I am using the yellow horizontal piece to determine where to put this. So there is card number two. Again, nice and simple. Your card is going to come with these punched out. If you do not own the handmade tag punch yet, no fear grab one on an order and I will send one punched for you. Okay. So there you have it. All right. Card number three gets a little bit more involved. It also uses an additional die set that is going to be leaving. This is the perennial postage dies. These make great rectangular shapes and that's what I use them for today. Um, again, this one is going to be retiring soon. I did not check its availability. If you look up postage, perennial postage, um, the website will tell you if it's in stock or low inventory, etc. So this is a fancy fold card. And I'm going to say it's a less fancy fold and more of a fancy cut. So we have a five and a half by eight and a half. Uh, piece of thick basic white cardstock. It is scored and folded at four and a quarter. And then we are going to take off, I believe I took off two inches. Yep, two inches off of the right hand edge. So I'm going to open this up. It doesn't matter which edge you take it off of because you just turn it and make it the way you want it. So we're going to take off two inches and just put that aside. We're going to use that later. Okay, so Two inches. Okay, so now I've turned it this way because I want the two inches on this side. Okay. So this card is mostly layering and cutting. There's only one little stamp on here. So we are going to cut these balloons out of here. So I'm going to save that for a moment. This is what we're going to stamp on. You will get all of these pieces cut out and ready to go. We've got two of these, one for the inside, one for the outside. We've got this piece, which is the flip side of this piece. And you can do it in whichever direction you like. 
I love the stripes the most. So I wanted a larger area of stripe. So I'm going to go ahead and build this. So I am putting this centered on the inside. It gives it a nice frame. This is four by five and a quarter. One of the things I like about using the Stampin' Seal Plus, as you can see, when you get it a little cattywampus, you can peel it off and re design or re um, center however you want it. Now, because I did two strips because I was being lazy and wanted to be in a hurry, there's extra adhesive on here and it's definitely not perfect. I'm totally not going to worry about that. Um, it's good enough. It's not even government work. So this fun piece is going to go on the outside. And of course, this piece is two inches. So it is left over from the six by six strip. So if you wanted to remake this at home on your own with your own supplies, a six by six cut down to five and a quarter and then cut two inches by five and a quarter. That is this front part right here. And then your four inches by five and a quarter is that back part. So we are gonna take this and I did not stamp anything fancy on the inside, but I'm going to add some adhesive to the inside here. And I am centering this as best I can right here in the center. So that is what it looks like right now. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our stamping and cutting. So we're gonna use our Fresh Freesia and we're gonna stamp the up, up and away, hooray, it's your birthday, right in the center of this small postage stamp cutout. And we're going to go ahead and layer this directly on the fresh freesia layer. I don't know why my mouth doesn't want to work today. All right. So we're going to layer this right here. Okay. And we're going to push that aside and close this up. So now, in order to get the fun hot air balloons, we're going to grab these. So you can fussy cut these if you'd like, but you can also cut these out just like this. So I'm going to tape my balloon cutouts in place with some washi tape. And I'm going to put some washi tape on my t-shirt, see if I can get some fuzz off of my t-shirt. That helps not to tear the paper later. So put as little tape or post-it note onto the spot you're trying to hold on to. because a post-it note is a great uh, sticky as well to hold on to these items. And now because I can do this in a little bit quicker of a fashion, I can come down here and go ahead and cut one of these little baskets. Um, I could use a scrap of paper and do um, the pecan pie paper if I wanted to match the other baskets, but I figured since we had this already on here that I will cut this one from here and then I'm going to run this through the big shot. I am using the large one so that I could just send this whole four inch piece of paper through 
You can cut it down and use the mini if you'd like. So you can see that I have my balloons and then this one, I'm going to be real careful, try not to damage that paper inside there. And then I've got to do one more pass to cut one more basket because they do show in the design. And then of course, I'm gonna save my scraps because look what's on the back, it's so much fun. So even though I chopped some balloons out of it, I am still gonna get use out of, out of this. So let's cut this one right here. Okay, so your balloons will not come cut out because you will um, you will cut them out based on the four inch section that you have or the six inch panel that you'll have in your kit. So you'll get to kind of select which balloons you want based on which ones are whole in there. All right, so our balloons are ready. Our sentiment is ready. We've got to build this layer. So the easiest way to do this, I'm going to set these aside up here, is in order for this to line up on the back side with this, I added a little bit of Stampin' Seal Plus just to the inside edges just like that. And then we're going to fold this and I'm going to just kind of, I used my fingers to hold this closed and then I lined up this outer edges here and then just pressed it down. So that is what that looks like. All right. So my balloons are going to kind of go a little bit um, off of this postage stamp background. So that's why we put this on first. And so I just turned everything over and I added some dimensionals to it for the balloons. And I did kind of stay towards the middle because I wasn't sure where they were going to end up landing on the card front. So And then I did put one tiny one at the bottom of each basket. If you do not have minis, you can trim the edge of your regulars down. They will work just fine. So on the last one, I did the big balloon up front, but I think I'm gonna switch them around for this one just to be different and show you that you can use your creativity however you would like now I am gonna kind of put this right here just for some perspective on where my balloons gonna go so I'm lining that up just like that okay and then I know this one is gonna go below and to the right and I'm gonna overlap that just a tiny bit for some added interest and then I will add each basket and you're just going to kind of line that up you can put it under or just to the same to the same line there we go so there's one that one's a little longer. So now for this guy, I know that most of it is going to fit. So I'm going to do four minis, but I'm going to keep them 
to the left hand side. And that way I know that this is going to line up and not catch on the outside edge over there. Ah, that one does not want to come up. Okay, so now, so I know this is all free of adhesive on this edge. And all we have left to do is add some of those fun dots. And I did a variety of colors on this one. Did a couple different, so I might do that again. So I like that this color is in there in those baskets. And a little bit of yellow. All right, card number three. So our last project is going to be that fun gift packaging. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so this is two parts, okay? So we're going to take some of these that are also in the mini and we're going to use our brayer and we're going to change the color from white to whatever color you want. So this one I did fresh freesia and I'm going to change it up and I'm going to use lemon lolly for this one. I am trying to get some some of these things off of my space, however, because it is going to make a mess on my backdrop here, and that can either be a piece of paper or a mat, anything you have. Um, this does get messy, so I'm going to move this aside. So our brayer, I believe, is also in the mini, and. It is just a fun way to add a little bit of color to some projects, to paper. You can add this to um, embossing folders. So you'll see, I'm gonna end up getting this on my fingers. I do have some baby wipes handy nearby. Um, these are the adhesive stickers. You can see that right there. And it's gonna get ink on it, but that part wipes off. So I'm just adding and you can see how it gives this fun textured um, coloration. And depending on the look that you want, you can add more. And I'm going to leave this actually a little bit on the variegated side. And all of that is going to be covered. So I'm just going to use this fun little chamois and just wipe this off. Let me put this aside. Let me tell you about this before I put this aside. I know I have shared it possibly before. So it has these little feet. So you can ink it up and then set it down. But when you want to roll it, you want those feet to stick up so that you don't get hooked up on anything, okay? So very important. And this is like a silicone type of a wheel. It's very solid. You could decorate this in other ways if you wanted. You could use some splatter or how whatever you really want. Um, the key is to wipe off this little bit here or you'll wear it so depending on what color you're doing that could be a little um, a little scary when you go and you have fresh freesia all over your fingers all right so I'm just giving this a second to kind of finish drying while that is happening let's take a look at the other components that you need to create this fun packaging. 
So we're going to use the three colors here and we're going to use some paper. So these are one by six strips. I did use two of them. You're going to want two of them to get the full circumference of that. I've got this is a one inch by five inch piece of the purple here, the um, oh God, fresh freesia. And that we're going to do some stamp. We're going to stamp wish big on there. And then you're also going to want, and I just had this ready to go, but you're going to want your piece of paper and yours will be trimmed the same way we did the other one. So I'm going to slide this in, making sure it's centered. And then just going to punch that down. Now, because we're creating a tag out of this, you, you're going to want to hole punch it as well. If you're doing this on your own. Okay. So I just have a generic hole punch here. Nothing fancy. Made sure I got it up in that top area. Okay. And then we have a little piece of this. You're going to put this on depending on where you want it. You might want it higher. You might want it lower. Um, so I just adhere it and trim it or you can trim it to two inches. And then I've got a scrap so that I can show you the clouds. Okay. We're going to punch out or we're going to die cut three clouds and then I just fussy cut this but I think this one might be spaced enough that we can send it through the mini as well. So let's go ahead and do our die cutting. So I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive here. I'm going to stick this on and then I'm just going to trim this away on the back. So just like that. All right. So now we need to cut our balloon. This is almost dry and three clouds. <coughs> and then we will, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this and get it out of the way. And then we'll cut because I'm going to bring the mini out just to show you how adorable it is. Okay. So I wanted wish big across this entire tag. So I just started at the right hand side. Freeze. I made a mistake. Let me back this up just a tiny bit. I did want this to match up. So I lined this up, punched it. So now you know exactly which end is which. So I started at the bottom and I stamped my way towards the inside and I kind of did a little, I don't know, cattywampus zigzag, I don't know, curve, so that I was able to put three wish bigs on there. Now we can set this one aside as well. All right. So now I'm going to grab the mini cut and emboss machine. You can see how tea tiny it is. It has these little wings that come out. So it folds up and stores nice and neatly. It does come with all the die cutting plates that you'll need. So we're just using some dies. So I have the um, die cutting plate and then the actual cutting plates that you cut on the clear ones. I don't know what this thing is called. Place die cutting engine. Da, da, da. So it tells you which pieces you need. So you need number one, that's what this is, and these two clear pieces, which are number two. They can go in in either direction. They do get kind of yucky. And when you first use them, they sound like you are breaking bones. So just be aware that that is the noise you may hear when you start cutting. All right, so there are two balloon dies, or cloud dies. I have no idea apparently what I'm making today. 
and I'm going to go ahead and send these through and then I'll cut one more of these clouds in just a moment. So you just layer this like a sandwich and you can see I have two clouds already cut. Let me go ahead and we will do one more cloud. I think I did two of the small ones. So let's put that on there and I'm going to scoot this up here. Let's see. And then I am going to cut this balloon right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those pieces of washi tape to hold that in place. Okay. I do offset this top piece. If you can see that so the inside is back just a little bit that allows the machine to kind of have even pressure on these pieces as it comes through otherwise sometimes it just doesn't doesn't always play nice in that section it'll act like you're hitting a wall all right so there's our third cloud and this hot air balloon and now I just want to cut out this little basket here and this is I believe the large basket so let me grab that and again I will use this same piece of washi tape And we will run this through. And that is it for die cutting this evening. So I'm just going to get that out of the way. And there is my little bucket. All right, let's put the tag together the rest of the way. So I am using those mini dimensionals again. And I put them on the back of my clouds as well, but I'm going to wait on the clouds until I see exactly where I would like to position them. Anytime you have an overlap of elements, you want to make sure that your levels are equal. So I'm going to put this balloon kind of off to the edge here, making sure. So don't push too hard. So I want to make sure I get this so it doesn't stick on the edge. I'm going to do it like this. Okay. All right. That's just a little trick. You can turn it over and see where your adhesive is and go from there. All right, so here is my bucket. Just like that. So here's where those overlapping pieces kind of come to play. So if I'm going to put this right here, it's already raised on this side. So I only need a mini dimensional on the right side. So I like to flip it directly down. And then I'm going to put just one of these here. And then I'm going to add a teeny tiny dot of glue. If you can see the glue. 
It's a little dot of glue. So that's going to be the part that sticks to the balloon itself. And I'm gonna leave this so that it overhangs on the right just a little bit. I'm pushing that down so that glue gets there. And then for these, I will start with the larger one and add my adhesives. These are, again, the mini dimensionals. And I'm gonna go in the other direction, this one. Okay, so that is all the way on there. And then I'm gonna kind of overlap this one here. So I need to put a dimensional way over here. And then again, a tiny dot of glue over here because it's gonna overlap. Actually put two little dots and then we'll come up here and allow that to overlap just a little bit. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put our dots on here. We are not making a tassel. You can make one if you have these. It took me forever to make the tassel, so I decided that we didn't have enough time for that. We're hidden. We're heading on an hour and I like to be done around the hour mark. So, and we are getting close. We will probably run over about five minutes. So feel free. Um, if you are watching the replay to fast forward. All right. So we have lots of dots tonight. All right. So we are going back to our fun, fun ribbon because it is just so beautiful. And we're going to send this through in one layer. And we're going to kind of make those even at the top. And then we're going to take those trio of colors and we're going to pull them all out and create one, like one ribbon out of it, if that makes sense. All right. So I just set those aside. I've pulled them like this. I am going to put this under here. And I like to use these little grippy tweezer thingies just to kind of hold everything down. But I'm going to tie this into a little knot at the top here. You could make it a bow if you'd like. I'm going to leave it a little bit on the long side so that it does offer some extra, extra embellishment. However, it is not a tassel. Okay, so that I've screwed up because I have to untie it and add my back layer. You have to make sure you go through both layers. I'm gonna untie this very carefully here. So, oops, all right, so we're gonna put this, make sure that your words are facing up so that they peek out from behind the white tag. And look, even with an oops, this is so much faster. Hi, Melissa. So much faster than creating the tassel. Now, if you have a cool little tassel making gadget, then by all means, make the tassel. Um, if you are in a hurry, do not make the tassel because it's not a super, super quick uh, type of project, okay? So there's that. That's how they look different, not a big deal. 
All right, so I'm gonna set these aside. Our ink has dried from this, so we're gonna go ahead and put this together and we'll be done in just a moment. All right, so you have two of these adhesive panels and before you even take them off, you want to kind of start bending these on the creased lines. Those, uh, I want to call them embossed lines because that's kind of what they are. So just kind of do that with all of them. They are going to tuck in nicely once we get everything together. The trickiest one is this right here. So we'll do that in just a second. So, what did I say? It's tricky. Okay, so there you go. I like to start in the middle and just kind of try to, you're kind of trying to bend it on that score line, but it doesn't bend all the way in. It's just gonna kind of make a little concave piece there. Okay, so now I'm hoping you can see how this is going to go. So these will be the outside pieces. These will be the inside pieces. I did peel them both off at the same time so that I can kind of make sure that they are even on the inside. Ooh, they're sticky. And I just kind of run that line to line, score line to score line, to the edge of the paper there. Okay, so this is what our box looks like. Now, I don't have anything in my box. I would love to know what you would put in this adorable little box. I'm gonna fold this down. Now, the trick is, that if you leave this at the up, upper end, you can open and close it without ruining your decor. So that was fun for me. I liked it that way. So I'm gonna be a little OCD. Since my edges are to the back, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this towards the back. Okay, and now I'm gonna use my Stampin' Seal Plus. I am going to run an entire layer of adhesive down the whole six inch strip. That's going to ensure that the overlap pieces adhere as well. I started this in the middle and then I just pushed all the way back. Okay, so that is one and then turn it over and you're gonna do the same exact thing you are, it's actually helpful if on the back piece, you make sure you go all the way to one of the edges and line that up so that it folds straight across. Okay, and then just go through and push that down and it should overlap if you haven't done it too crookedly with the next side, just like that. And then I just kind of push that down to make sure it's nice and adhered. Okay, now we're gonna take these again because you know, I like to put things away first. And we're gonna add one more layer and you could add a bow here if you wanted to. Um, the reason I do this is so that our tag can slide through this layer. So I'm simply coming around and tying this. Again, you could do a bow here or you can leave it long. So here's my little bow on this one. Okay. And then my tag, I just stick this back piece under here and she's done. So I have this instead of a tassel. 
for this one. And then I said she's done, but she's not done because we get to add some more of these fun embellishments. So I'm going to throw some of this purple on here because um, Fresh Freesia is just so stinking cute with yellow. This to me screams birthday. Um, tell me what you think. Uh, I just did two on the top there. So that is it. So we are at one minute and six seconds. I hope you have enjoyed all of tonight's projects. Remember the details to get this kit are in the description. And um, again, I hope that you have a great Easter, a great rest of this week. And next week I will be back with a whole nother class for you. Uh, I look forward to inspiring you some more. I hope this was fun. Oh, wait, don't leave. There's more. Hold on. I totally forgot that I have some other samples to share. You know, because I keep saying I want to do more scrapbooking. I did a double page layout last night. And before I get to that, let me show you what some other people have done. So this was created by Manda Dorley. She used the fun um, textured uh, glimmer paper in the back there and a little bit of that sparkle paper that we have. And she used the negative space to create a little card front. So that is another piece of inspiration. Here's another one using the um, hot air balloons set here. She used the sparkle paper to cut those balloons out. That one is by Bryn. And then this one is Linda Cullen. And she used that fun paper with one of the Easter stamp sets to make those Easter eggs and that little double uh, oval punch right there. So that is three additional card inspiration pieces. And then here is, I'm gonna share a better picture of these, um, but I did two pages. This has a tiny bit of adhesive under there so I can pull it up and do some journaling. And I'm waiting, my daughter would like her photos on here. So we're going to print some of her 16th birthday photos and put those on here. And then somewhere I'm going to put the numbers one and six, but I can't do that until I actually have printed photos. So look forward tomorrow or Friday to the photos of these being uploaded on my uh, Facebook page and Instagram. And that is officially it. So again, Nicole with Equally Creative by Nicole. Like, share, give me some comments, hearts. Um, hi, Melissa. Hi, Karen. I'm so glad that you guys were here tonight. Um, and that's it. I look forward to next week. I'll see y'all soon. Have a great Easter. Bye.